Oftentimes in today video games, especially top-down games, when a player goes behind any kind of object, it completely disappears from the user's sight. This breaks the immersion and sometimes looks really bad. To fix that, we use something we call an occlusion silhouette. It's basically an effect where there's a shadow that appears in front of the object that the player is behind of. It's quite easy to set up, so let's get right into it and create it. Let's go. Here you are in the Gidel editor. Uh, this is our scene. And let's go ahead and go to the player scene. You can see we've got these animations here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this. But, and I'm going to pass it in this reference here in the code. What this basically does is, in, like uh, since we have two of these animations, it's going to play the uh, animations according to the direction for both of these animations. So we have an identical copy of all of our sprite and animations. I'm going to create a shader material on the second one and I'm going to load in this shader. And I'm going to be explaining this shader in just a bit. But the thing is, this shader does is it turns it into the silhouette sprite, the second one. And when it comes in contact with the original sprite, since they were both same, it compares the color and if the color of these sprites is uh, you know same as the above one it disappears that's just the main function let's now learn about the shader logic if you're not interested in the nerdy stuff and you can skip ahead to the next time step and if you don't want to copy the code line by a line you can download the project file or the shader file let's go ahead and let's start it we start by declaring uh, the shader type of canvas item create a uniform of sampler 2D type called screen texture and a type of in screen texture by our nearest folder. We create a uniform of vector 4 or called silhouette texture for our source color of vector 4 for our for transparency. We create a uniform of fluid color tolerance for fitting in. In our fragment function, we create a local variable called sprite color and use the texture call to and provide it with the texture value and the view coordinates to get the texture of the image. We use an if statement and a condition of sprite dot a less than 0.01 to check if any of the uh, pixels are transparent and use the discard function to, to discard them and stop them processing. We create a vector 4 of screen color to get the color of the texture behind our image. We use the same method, we give it the screen texture and the screen genes. We create a boolean of color mat and in an all function, we create a less than function and compare the value of an absolute of sprite color minus screen color and vector 4 uh, of type of type the color tolerance value that we created above. Then at the end we use a if statement to check if the boolean above or color match is true. That means if the color of our sprite is same as the color behind it or the color of the screen, then we just use our sprite's original color that means no change. But if they are different, we give it the silhouette color and the silhouette transparency. And that's basically the shader code. The final touches is now that we go to the second sprite, we go to the ordering and we set the Z index to 100. Uh, this is just so the silhouette appears all above the sprites. Uh, as you can see, if we go to the scene, our main scene and run it, it should have the effect. And yes, now you just should be able to understand how it works but and uh, it's pretty nice basically these sprites come between those and it works and i'll see you in the next one